Okay, again, this is a uh, Greystone Park. This is part two. I went over some key parts in Deuteronomy 1 in part one. Here in part two, I'm going to go over Deuteronomy 3, verses 21 through 25, because this is key here. A lot of people don't understand. They don't understand the nature of God. They don't understand the characteristics of God. They don't understand the spirit of God. They think that, you know, if they get on drugs, they understand, or if they're, they're high on psychology and propaganda, they understand. But that is not the nature of God Almighty. Okay. So Deuteronomy 3, Moses forbidden to cross the Jordan. This is key here. Why is Moses forbidden to cross the Jordan? Okay. Because he didn't wholeheartedly follow the Lord. Okay, and the Lord was leading them on warrior missions. Where right? he says, go face the Anakites and them. Go face the enemies of God. Like in Judges 3, where it says that the Lord left these adverse forces around the Jews, and the Israelites rather, in order to teach them warfare. So God is a warrior, Exodus 15.3. He's trying to teach them the true essence of being a warrior. And the true essence isn't just striking down someone's flesh. The essence is building character and serving God Almighty with universal pinpointed moral precision so we see in Deuteronomy 3 verse 21 it says at that time I commanded Joshua you have seen your own you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings the Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going do not be afraid of them the Lord your God himself will fight for you at that time I pleaded with the Lord sovereign Lord you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country in Lebanon. So what did he cite as proof that God is God and that God who revealed himself to Moses was actually God and not the devil? He cited his moral and mighty works, his warrior works. How? The mere works of the government? No. The mere works of the Olympics? No. The mere works of the UFC? No. Some knucklehead getting a fight at the mall or something? No. He was citing focused moral intensity and universal pinpointing moral precision in a, in a warrior spirit. Okay? And those are the deeds and the mighty works and the strong hand. The strong hand and the mighty works. Now this is what every church has wrong. Every, everybody has wrong but me. Because it's not enough to, to say that you praise the Lord. It's not enough to try not to sin. You have to be in the warrior spirit of God. That's why the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. It's a matter of power. It's a matter of coming into the power of the warrior spirit of God. Okay, if one does not do that, they are not right with God because it's, it's the formula and the formation and the form in which you serve God, which is the warrior spirit of God. Okay, that is key. I can't go over Exodus 15.3 enough. I can't go over Isaiah uh, 42.13 enough. That the Lord marches out like a warrior, like a champion. Psalm 19, the son is the bridegroom, is the, uh, the champion. Okay, so if somebody isn't set apart as a valid top martial artist with no generational ill-gotten gains, no tech, breeding, cheating, or ill-gotten gains, then they do not represent God unless they're obeying he who is. That's why kings wear a sword. That's why David faced Goliath. That's why Christ said he's the root and offspring of David, not the root and offspring of Saul or Goliath or any, any Jew at random, but David specifically. The other Jews, just like in Deuteronomy 1, they were afraid to face Goliath. They fled in fear. The Spirit of God just gives you a spirit of courage and moral precision and sound judgment and discipline not a spirit of fear. So they proved that they weren't supposed to lead. Just like all the churches and all other people prove that they're not me. The Christos means anointed. Anointed with what? The warrior spirit of God, where more moral clarity is mental clarity. It is romantic clarity. It is spiritual clarity. And there's a reason why it's called the spirit, because it's like the word spear, to spear something. In what spirit? In the spirit of universal pinpointed moral precision and focus moral intensity. So you see a lot of people saying, hey, you know, we don't want people to be high strung. Why do you think it's called high strung and God is called the most high? They said they don't want people to get angry. They want them to be tame. Well, why is it called moral outrage and righteous indignation? Okay, when, you get, when, you, when you're angry at the world, 
and you, you use discipline and, and strategy and sense and sound judgment and wisdom and the fruit of wisdom, which is righteousness and vice versa. That's when you transcend the world, but how can you do it? You have to be in the divine order because in the 10 commandments, I believe it's Deuteronomy five, it says thou shall not steal. Thou shall not steal and stealing is a variation of cheating. Thou shall not cheat the righteous one out of his right to lead. You can't be in the, in the spirit of unrepentant sin and then turn around and say that you're serving God because whoever doesn't gather with the anointed scatters and one who's slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. And, and God is not the author of disorder, but with peace. But in Isaiah, it says there's no peace for the wicked. So if God is the author of peace, it's with who? It's with the divine order. It's not with, with man. It's not by compromising. It's not by selling your soul to fit. It's not by shrinking to fit. In Proverbs 21, it says the righteous are as bold as a lion, right? The wicked flee, though no one pursues. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. And Christ said in this, as a character in the story, I did not come to bring peace, but a fire. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And the spirit of God is the essence of so the sword, which is the consuming fire that we, we are told about in Hebrews. There's no way around it. So when we see mankind's failure to rally together for what is precisely right, then we know beyond any doubt that they're in the spirit of the devil who said to lead the whole world astray. Just one or two nations, just all the nations, but whatever nation you live in, no. All the nations are led astray. And it says in Psalms that the, the wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations who forget God. Now, how do they forget God? How do you know God? You know God by his warrior spirit. How did Moses know God? How did David? How did Samson? How did Joshua? They knew God by rising up and facing adversity. How did Isaiah and Amos and Hosea and Zechariah and Zephaniah, when they're telling the Jews things that they don't want to hear? They knew him by his warrior spirit and his refusal to placate evil. I'll end it right there.